Welcome back, legends. Another episode of Swanny and Jake. Uh, please give us a like and subscribe if you haven't already, if you're new here. Uh, thank you for coming along. Big guest today, Jackie Jenkins, the newest on the UFC roster, mate. How does that feel? Yeah, it feels good. Pumped. Happy to be here and uh, looking forward to a big fight in February. He came on my podcast like a few weeks ago. And he came on it. That's not very nice. <laughs> <laughs> so did you, twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, he's a, but no, he came on. Podcast he's, you run <laughs> oh yeah, it's in that band too. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. But he came on and he's like, Fuck, I thought I was coming on Swanny and Jake. I've been sw stitched up. So. <laughs> We had to get him on. So yeah, he's a yeah, big UFC yeah. fan too. You fighting? You got a fight ball? Yeah, fighting um, Feb 12 in Perth against an American fella. Bit of a wrestler, old school boxer, so it'll be a good fight. When do you start? Mid, just mid November. Now, when he's going to camp? Now, like now. this week, yeah. So That's start, a long camp. So start, yeah. I usually do eight, nine weeks. Um, this one, I just want to do a little bit longer because you're gonna have that Christmas. I was gonna say, is it a tough time? Christmas, New Year's? Yeah, oh, but I've had the last four Christmases. I've had fights booked in January for three of them. So. Yeah. so on you purpose, so you, nah, so you know. not really. You just take what you can get, especially with COVID and stuff. It was yeah. just take a fight when you can get it. Who's your uh, favorite UFC fighter all the time? You can't go past Connor. Like Connor at his best. Really? Like he, he's Sorry. just. It'll be hard to explain to our kids what it was like when Connor was at his prime. Yeah. Fandom was up. Um, yeah. just yeah. talking too, bro. The yeah. press conferences were better than. Oh, sometimes. Oh, man, he was just an enigma. So yeah, I can't go past Connor. So this week you would have seen one of our episodes. Me and Swanee, we did uh, agree to disagree segment where we. <laughs> got given some statements and Swanee and I would share our points of view, clash or not. So today we obviously with Jackie Boy on and Swanee being at a UFC Nuffy too, we're gonna do some UFC and AFL stuff. So, all right. Is John Jones the pound for pound best UFC fighter the UFC has ever seen? Pound for pound. Hey, Jack has wrote that down really quick as well. What do we got? Show the, uh, show the cameras. Strongly agree, Strongly disagree. Agree. Oh, he's my favorite fighter, but he just hasn't fought in any other weight division. So for me, so until he fight, he's going up to heavyweight. But I think he's the best fighter of all time in the UFC, but pound for pound, he just hasn't fought in any. Who's other. better than him, pound for pound? Volk, at the moment. GSP. Volk's, Volk's only fought one yeah, weight class at the moment. Conor McGregor. <laughs> Yeah, Ooh. you can make the argument for Connor. Call me eight, but, but he, John Jones has beat him. I know that. Yeah, twice. He's the best to do it. You, you look at his one loss and it was disqualification. Yeah. And everyone else he just ran through. Like the toughest fight he had was probably Gustafsson. And he openly admitted, I was out partying. Dominic Reyes. Yeah, yeah, Reyes was, yeah, Reyes, I was yeah, there Reyes in Houston. Well, well, oh, were you there? Yeah, Houston. The, yeah. the Reyes fight was a weird one because it was just like, it, was, it looked like he just didn't care. Yeah. It's like he can show up on his worst day and not give a f and he still goes well. Yeah. So no, I agree with that. He's, I think he's the best fighter of all time, but just found because he hasn't won in any Hasn't weight. gone to a different yeah. weight class. But yeah. he's going to, I, I think so. Go to heavyweight. Um, yeah, if he, if he wins there, he could be just smash everyone. I think the other thing is, if you're gonna go with Jones, pound for pound, you have to have two lists. You have to have a list with an asterisk for everyone who's popped for steroids. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? Yeah, but so we kind of respect Johnny Jones. He's popped for everything. Cocaine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The, the, the partying, yeah, exactly. the partying yeah. being yeah. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. best. We, yeah. we do respect that highly here. Yeah. But I can't, I can't argue with that. There's no right answer, I think, with John Jones. Yeah, but he's yeah. my favorite fighter. He's the best, I think, ever. He just dominated, ran through everyone. But he wins a total heavyweight. The two toughest That's divisions cool. in, yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's done. Is a UFC event the best sporting event as a spectator to go to? Here we go, what have you got? Agree oh. and disagree. <laughs> Let's open this up. The, the only reason why I, the, I, went, I, I went to um, Madison Square Garden seeing when GSV beat Bisbing and Naomi Yunus won and Dillashaw knocked out Garbrandt. That was the best sporting event I've ever been to, but I, I did the World Cup in Russia. And oh, going, to a, world, a going to a World Cup, maybe not Qatar, the World Cup in Russia is fucking incredible. Um, the two weeks there over an extended period of time, but if you're talking about just watching one actual that's what, thing. That's what, we'll yeah. go with that, one actual the, thing. The like, yeah, World Cup is like World Cup, yeah. four weeks. In Russia, the like, land down under comes on. You never see it, like there's 20,000 Aussies in a foreign country belting out land down. It yeah. was, the game itself, we were shit. So it was all right, but like the atmosphere, the, the best atmosphere I've done, but as a whole, the, the World Cup for me. Yeah, I just reckon even for me personally, even when you go to like a local show and it's not superstars or anything like that, and you see people walk out and you're like, these guys are going to hurt each other. Mm -hmm. it, nothing gets the hair on the back of your neck stand up like that. So I was at um, GSP Johnny Hendrix. Yeah. And when you're at like in Vegas, Vegas Fight Week just has this huge like buzz around it, especially for someone like GSP. You go into the venue and it's just, it actually feels like you're in a coliseum. Like they're, they're coming out to do damage to yes. each other. And it just gets- Bloody it takes you back to like the ancient Roman days. It, it like, get, that's what it would I reckon like. one of the Connor fights would be just all time. Like when he was at his prime and yeah. going to Vegas with like the Wayne's day before, the, 
tens of thousands of iris to descend upon yeah. a Vegas and just that would be something worth um, yeah, I reckon that'd be all time for sure. He yeah. has an Aldo fight, so he's like the Yeah, yeah, so just like, huge. Like, oh, if he comes back, you just do anything to be able to go, just to see it. Like, not have any expectations yeah. of the fight, but just go for the spectacle of the event. You think he's done as a fighter? Um, oh, actually, no, I'm going to pause you here, because this is actually, the, uh, this ties into the next uh -huh, one. Okay. Conor McGregor will fight and win again in the UFC. Keyword and win. Or oh, they've both got hey, a three. So go. you're, the, the, the I'll give him, I'll give him years, a tuna. <laughs> two yeah, years yeah. off, yeah. he can't fight for what, another six months as well? Yeah. Because yeah, of the Mr. Drug Test or something? Yeah, he went out of the testing pool. And to come back in, you have to do six months of testing to be eligible again. Oh. So how how, do you, how can you come back after two years off in combat sports too, where, they, where it moves quickly every six months and win a fight? So for everyone else, the average fighter in the UFC, as soon as you leave, the game passes you so quick. There's certain people, um, I think McGregor's one of them, he got to the top with just an X Factor left hand and he's not gonna lose that. So he can still put anyone out. So the UFC, when he comes back, are gonna go, who is the most reasonable person we can give him a fight who's most likely to stand there with him and maybe get hit with that left hand? And it doesn't matter, 45, 55, or even 70, if he hits you with that left hand, you're a chance to drop. So I think he'll come back, they'll give him a good matchup. Don't know if he like wins. a Cerrone type matchup again? Cause that's yeah. why... He can get Diaz, as long as Diaz doesn't take him to the floor. Exactly. You know what I mean? Cause yeah, Diaz exactly. is... And the UFC them. just has to pay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. They won't feed him to the wolves. They'll give him one yeah. for a tune up or something like that to maybe fight Diaz next. So it could be someone, you know, in the past that he's beaten and wants to beat again or whoever it is, they'll give him something, get him yeah. a win, I think. If he wants to come back, who knows? He says it all the time, he's a billionaire and He's making movies that now. <laughs> and you, I'm not a fighter, first thing from, but I guess once you lose, you know, what, what some of the quote was, it's hard to get up a train when you're sleeping in silk pajamas or something. I know. So, <laughs> that's good. Oh, that's good. That when can you be the name of this episode. Millions, billions of dollars. Yeah. It'd be hard to get out of bed at six in the morning and go for a run when you're sitting on your yacht, I would think. So maybe the hunger's not there, but um, if he comes back, I think he can get it done. And the literal, literal hunger. Like hard to go to bed hungry, making weight, if you like. If you've got a chef there who can make you a nice meal. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right, well, speaking of uh, Conor McGregor, his nemesis. So as effective as Khabib Nurmagomedov is, He's still boring to watch. What have we gone? Well, Agree, disagree. This, this is for the for the UFC fighter who knows the ins and outs. That's what I was going to say. I'm with, I'm with so, you though. I'm with you. Yeah, like my missus would watch and go, he's boring. A he's proper like, UFC I'm fan who. The reason I don't strongly disagree, like I just disagree, is because he's not one of those wrestlers who sits on top and does nothing. He's always going for the finish. It's actually interesting to watch when he puts someone down and just beats him and beats him and beats him. Whereas you've had wrestlers like GSP was way more boring. Like GSP would get on top and he'd do very little work a lot of the time. Whereas Khabib's just constantly looking for the finish. But 100%, it's not nearly as exciting as watching someone go to work on the feet. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Next one. Jake Paul is right about UFC's fighters pay being too low. I don't know when they get paid, but... Not, so, very, so not just, very much. So yeah, in short, he's so, fight with Anderson Silva. He made a deal if he if he beat Anderson Silva that they would make a fighters union together to fight, and you, uh, Anderson <coughs> Silva will be the president of it to fight for the rights of UFC pay and yeah. uh, wellness and stuff. Jackie, <laughs> taking a bit of time yeah. there, brother. Big fan of this show, Uncle Dana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, yeah. No, all... yeah we're gonna get him on one day. What have we gone? We've gone strongly agree, agree. I the only thing I can prepare to the boxing. A boxing fight, you're making 10, 30, 40, 50 million dollars in a fight. Connor may make that, but I don't think there's too many others that make that. And I'd say the UFC's probably gone past boxing now as a mm. spectacle. So it's not so much for the top end guys because they'll be looked after. It's so many guys on the bottom who, you know, I don't know this, what it takes to pay for a, a camp. You've got to pay nutritionists, like you were saying before. Like mm. Dietitian manager takes 20%. You're getting paid 30,000 for a fight, 50,000 for a fight. I can't imagine there's much left for the fighter once to travel and all that's coming. <laughs> that's too much. Yeah. <laughs> 50, well, do you know the thing, that, the thing that shocked me was uh, Paddy the Batty when he came out and he was like, when he was well known, he's like, yeah, I got 12 grand for the fight and yeah. then 12 grand for the like, fight of the night. 24 yeah. grand all up. And he yeah. was like, one of the biggest spectacles. Well, that's, and that's when I was like, fuck, they that's pretty much, get much. Yeah, that's pretty much standard for entry level. I'd just like to see, like, I think the UFC does such a great job and they look after a great company to be with. And compared to every other company, yeah. that's the thing, it's all comparative, isn't it? Because, like, compared to the other three major organizations, UFC 100% pays the most. Yeah. I would like to see that, like you said, the bottom threshold lifted a little bit yeah. for those guys who have busted their ass for 10 years to get in to sort of get that immediate yeah. gratification for it. 
But in saying that, they've dominated the game and put themselves in a position where they, they make the rules. It's a retirement scheme. If you've had 10 fights in the UFC, you get, mm. you yeah. know, uh, once you're retired, five years out of the game, you get, like the AFL, you know what I mean? You yeah, get, yeah like that's 20 grand a year for 20 years, 30, just to yeah. help them move on. They've got enough money, but Absolutely. it's not for me to decide. All right, into the next one. Is Jack Jenkins a one-trick pony? <laughs> Dana White's word, it's not mine, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> there we go. Get, get yeah, your say go back. back. He uh, said something different to you though, off camera though, didn't he? He, he sort of he sort of was pretty complimentary of my uh, performance out the back and my grappling. And as he said to me, the matchmakers looked at him and told him like, hey, this kid's actually a kickboxer. Like he's a really good striker. So this is just a different skill set. Every media personality I've spoken to since the fight is like anyone who's watched any of your career knows you're absolutely not a one trick pony. My last five opponents, I've broken three of their legs. So you don't, you don't. You like that. to give us a leg kick on Jay. <laughs> yeah. He likes to leave here. Like yeah, I think you fun. said something like, I've broken your leg and I'm still going to keep kicking it. There's a, yeah. there's a yeah. famous quote, which is yeah. really dark because he's quite a nice guy. Yeah, that, can tell, yeah. So. That, wouldn't, that wouldn't be pleasant. Yeah. No. All right. No. Next one tying into the man. Dana White is the best CEO in all of professional sports. Yeah, I don't know all the other CEOs. But From like, what we know. I think he's he doesn't listen to outside noise and he's not influenced by the woke media or the anything else that complain. He's just like, this is our company. We're going to do what we do. If you don't like it, you can get fucked. They worked right. through COVID uh, when no one, everyone else was too scared. He's like, we're going to put fights on. The UFC was was nowhere when sumos were fighting midgets and you know all this kind of thing. And he's turned into the biggest combat sport in the world. So yeah, well for said. me definitely. You yeah. said he's he's like what you see on camera, off camera, isn't he? Yeah, hundred percent. Except maybe a little bit more approachable. When I got in, he was welcome to the company. You know, hundred percent agree. The sport wouldn't be where it is without him. I'm happy that I got in in time to get sort of time with him still at the head because who knows what's going to happen after he leaves like you, you just don't know with an organization like this we've only ever had Dana in the UFC yeah if we have the UFC without Dana what's going to happen I imagine it's here to stay yeah. but um you don't know so yeah well said all right moving into the footy stuff now Dane Swan oh, yeah. was the best midfielder of his generation what are these, what are these stupid ones <laughs> up for <laughs> he's gone strongly disagree <laughs> <laughs> I could just put disagree. This is our show. <laughs> disagree. Yeah. No, just Why do you have to do the S store oh. in capitals too? Well, it's obvious. A very good generation to be yeah. fair, but if you look well, at the C, if you look at the CV, no, well, hard generation. obviously Ablett and Judd. Well, that was third. That's Ablett. good. That's good top three. Ablett and Judd are the guy the two best midfielders ever played. That's right. right. I think. Yeah. I think Ablett. Generation. That's yeah. the only reason I put S instead of just yeah. D. <laughs> I just think Ablett's the goat. So. I love the D. So yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, yeah, Jesus, so stitch up there. <laughs> this is yeah. Sorry, I do apologise. This is a good one. I like this one. Yeah. Is um, Jack Jenkins? You didn't say Jack Jenkins is the best Australian. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's now. That's why he's becoming a bird. Yeah. All right. Winning an AFL premiership is harder than winning a world title a title bout in the UFC. Oh. Very tough, very layered. Well, is that, to, is winning an AFL pre winning, Premiership harder yeah, than winning same. a world championship in the UFC? Should we just write which one we think is harder? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Apologies. Didn't think I was Nearly wrote UFO. World title, they've both gone the UFC belts. Why? So without telling me why the UFC, why not AFL? I think there's more, there's more room for luck. You have to allow more room for luck and timing in the UFC picture because there's so many things like just getting into the UFC, you have to rely on a little bit of luck and timing and the right thing happening at the right time. And then when, once you get in, you have to go on such a big run where nothing can go wrong. And all that time, you're not at risk of injury. The guy is literally trying to injure you the whole time. So to be able to sustain that run and get to the top is so hard. Obviously an AFL Premiership is super hard, but once you're in the system and if you're good enough, chances are you can find your way somewhere but in the UFC, you, Jack Jenkins, can control your destiny. One hundred percent. That's and that's. Twenty had to play with twenty one other blokes. Yeah, well, that, that's, that's on the flip side. Only one person has a world title. Twenty two have it every year, and yeah. I mean, I've got one, and I'm a f so. <laughs> uh, and, there's, and there's people who play in AFL games who played win a premiership, play twenty games, and you think, how's he want to play? Yeah, yeah. And the other thing is, we're limited because there's only twenty seven million people that can win one. Because apart from Mason Cox, because it's all in Australia, there world title only one person's got one, and anyone from the world, yeah, could, is in the UFC. So you've got yeah, yeah, yeah. eight billion people for one one 
Fair point. measly title where and you have Australia, you got that's a good you point. Know, 27 well million and 22 people. And you're destined to one weight class. So like, if you're a light heavyweight, you're just unlucky. You came through when John Jones was there. Like you're no chance. You can still you can still win a premiership and be third best midfielder in the comp. Whereas if you're the third best at light heavyweight, you're just the third best. Yeah, well said. Jackie boy, I reckon you'll like this is the last one. Dane Swan should learn how to play golf. I strongly agree. Massive golfer. Big golf fan. Yeah, Love big player. Oh, 24. Oh, three's going up to him. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get gonna get to scratch. Oh yeah. yeah. See my thing for him, Swanny's now obviously a father. Yeah. It's good to get out of home car. Well, yeah, that'd be the only reason I'm going on a golf trip. Like, you've never picked up a golf club <laughs> in your life. So well, I'm the caddy. <laughs> uh, so what, 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 why I probably missed my calling as a golfer, you know, obviously footballers love playing golf. And it's probably fair to say I probably didn't look after myself real well on the weekends after the games. Yeah. So the boys would get up on, their, up on their days off and get up at 6 a.m. to play golf. The last thing I was going to be doing in the Melbourne winter is getting up that early playing. I, I needed to sleep because of my body. I was still trying to recover from the weekend. So I'd sleep all day and watch basketball or something. So I probably missed my calling because what I did to myself on the weekends. And I just couldn't be bothered going out. I'd be like, I can't. 38 touches. Know. 38 beers, yeah, exactly. he, he had to miss the golf session. Well, thank you, Jackie boy. Uh, great segment, mate. Appreciate it. Good luck for the fight in person. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Yeah, good we'll, luck. Uh, see you next week, and make sure you're watching Jackie boy in Perth. What is it, Feb? Feb 12. Feb 12. See you there.